Good morning. Yeah, it's six in the morning on a Saturday. Not exactly sure why we're up at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. For all you guys that are early birds, I'm not sure how you do it. So Kim, Daisy and I are heading to Moab, Utah. We're leaving our home here today, uh, just outside of Portland. And we're going on an 11 day road trip down to the Easter Jeep Safari. That is the reason why we're up at 6 a.m. in the morning. All right, trailer's hooked up. Kimmy's here, Daisy's here, and we are on our way. We are heading to um, Eastern Oregon. Farewell Bend State Park. Farewell Bend State Park. Got about a six hour drive, and then down to Moab. <laughs> So our first stop, we had to pull over to the rest area. We're about a couple hours out. We're in the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. Still got about three, four hours of driving. Everything showed, nope, everything showed just normal in the middle because I was, when it shifted hard, I looked over there to see and it, that was all fine. And then all of a sudden we started seeing blue smoke come out the back. When the truck was trailing, we pulled off and it was coming. We could see once we stopped, it was underneath the middle of the truck. Yeah. So here we are on the side of the road. The truck started smoking bad. We think it might be a transmission issue. It was, uh, we had it in tow mode for a little bit and it started shifting pretty hard and all of a sudden smoke just started coming up from the tires so we pulled over letting it kind of cool off a little bit and kind of trying to see if we can check see if we lost the transmission fluid or something this is a 2017 ford and we have plenty of uh capacity our trailer's not very heavy for this type of truck so Anyway, this is uh, not quite what we expected to run into. Uh, we think it might just be the pass that we just crossed, uh, Dead Man's Pass, out in Eastern Oregon. It's a pretty uh, heavy, it's a pretty big pass, as you might have seen on some of the, the video. Uh, some of the semis were doing maybe 30, 35, and a 55. And actually, I take it back in a 70. Uh, so they were having a really hard time carrying their load. So I'm thinking that maybe with the uh, the weight, we may just have overheated a little bit. So fans running really hard, um, nothing's leaking. Check the oil, we have oil. Uh, radiator looks to be fine. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, let it cool off for a little bit and hopefully we'll be back on the road here shortly. So luckily uh, it's raining now, which isn't good for me, but might be good for the truck. The fan is uh, not running quite as hard as it was couple minutes ago so hopefully we'll be back on the road soon and there's Daisy eating snow dude she's so funny there she snow. is Daisy don't eat the black snow don't eat the black snow is that why you wanted to come out it's so bad you just wanted to see snow crazy dog she does love snow she loves to lick it, but she likes to play in it too, like most dogs, I guess. It's the most fun she's had all day. Us on this, she has no idea that we're broken down on the side of the road on a dangerous highway. The problem is too, you got these semis and cars just bombing down this hill, this 70 mile an hour highway, and being on the side of the road, we're lucky. Just as the thing started to smoke, there was a pull off but for miles there were no pull-offs so i don't know what we would have done had that happen uh, we would have been stuck in the middle of the road blocking the lane i guess all right so we're back on the road again 
We let it sit for a good 15 minutes or what have you until the fan kind of slowed down. We didn't notice. All the gauges look fine. And uh, like I said, we talked to Kim's dad, who's a mechanic or retired mechanic, and he mentioned that that hill, what's it called? Cabbage Hill. Cabbage Hill, uh, as you're coming into Eastern Oregon, uh, takes out a lot of vehicles, supposedly trucks, semis, people hauling. Uh, so it's pretty common on that hill to overheat. So we were, you know, this truck does have a lot of power and, you know, we're pulling a pretty heavy full load. And I was doing a good 70, 75, two sections going up that hill. Um, so I think, you know, it started to shift really hard. So I can see we think it just has something to do with the transmission. But right now all the gauges show it's good. We've been hauling for another, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes now. It doesn't seem like any issues. So just continue to keep an eye on it and see what happens. All right, we finally made it. Farewell Bend State Park. It only took us eight hours. <laughs> So camp for night one is pretty much set up. We have got water and electricity. No sewer at this hookup, but that's fine. We've got large tanks. And then tomorrow, I think when we get to Ogden, Utah, I think we have full hookups there. So this was uh, first come, first serve at these spaces. And Kim and I thought coming all the way out here, there wasn't gonna be anybody here. But this thing is full. I think there's maybe five spots left. So we got really lucky. Cool thing is it just overlooks this lake here. So we'll get out there and take a walk around, pull out the drone and uh, take some shots. All right, so night one. We got more rain. Boo. If you ever want to come to Oregon, be ready for some rain. Ain't that right, Days? That's just what we do here. Even in Eastern Oregon, it still just rains all the dang time. What do you do? The good news is, we're heading to Moab where it's supposed to be 70. All right, so we're just getting loaded up. Uh, first thing in the morning here. And again, this is Farewell Bend State Park. And this is located just outside of Baker City in Eastern Oregon. Okay, where are we? Shoshone Falls. Shoshone Falls in Twin Falls, Idaho. And uh, we're running a little bit behind on time. We're hoping to stop and pick up some fast food lunch. But instead, we just hopped in the trailer and came made us a couple sandwiches. That's a good thing about having a trailer. And I think we've peed in it like four times today. <laughs> yeah. Which is good too. You don't have to try to find out houses and stuff like that. So anyway, on our way now to Ogden, right? Yep. Willard Bay State Park. If we can make it. It's a couple hours away still. All right. So finally, out of Idaho and into Utah. As you can see, the weather is not cooperating. We just cannot seem to get away from rain. All right, so we finally made it. We are at Willard State Park in Utah. And the rain is coming. Willard State Park is intended to pay using blah, blah, blah. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, you got a reservation? No. All right, you guys need full hookups? Yes. How big is your trailer? 25. 25? Right on, let me see if I can get you something. Okay, okay thanks. Uh, we are now in our spot here. And uh, pretty nice spots, actually. Not uh, not super busy, as we are in uh, mid-April. And as you can see from the clouds and the rain that we had, it was pretty uh, nasty weather. But right now we're just trying to get everything set up 
uh, before the rain comes. Uh, they say it's supposed to hit about nine. And so luckily we did a quick unhook, got the water, electricity, sewer, everything hooked up. And now we are gonna take a quick walk around this place and see what they got here. Um, so far it looks like a pretty nice little park. We got a covered awning on the bench. They got a grill, which is pretty neat. You don't see that too often where they actually have a grill for you. And then of course you have your crazy dog that's trying to choke herself. And then a fire pit here. All right, so a short little walk. And when I say short, I'm talking less than two minutes. You've got this cool park here. And you can see it's almost, almost kind of like a beach. The sand is like you'd find maybe in a playground. And they've got camping areas or, or day use areas all down this thing. And I could imagine the summertime, this thing is probably pretty packed with people because it looks like it'd be make for some pretty easy swimming. You got the mountains behind you. You got Kim. You got Daisy. Yeah. Willard Bay you Reservoir. got some strange dude. And then you got this cool thing. See these, you guys seeing these mosquitoes? Look at that, look at those mosquitoes. Can you see that? Yeah, they're everywhere. Just hundreds of them. All right, so we're back at camp. Kim is doing the favorite thing she loves most of all of camping. She's a pyro. She likes to start yeah, but fires. Now you're like showing this time that I'm cheating. I'm using a turf like long. Nobody had to know that. You can see it. Like nobody. Now we're on pointing. <laughs> so you just admitted something you didn't have to admit. That's a wide So good job line. on that. All right, so you know a few minutes ago, I was bitching and moaning about all the mosquitoes around here. And it's true, there are thousands of mosquitoes. But I purchased a thermocell mosquito repellent last year. And what this thing does, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'll put a link to it down below. And what it basically does is it puts a cone. You turn this thing on, a little start button, and what it does, you can't see it, but kind of fumigates the area and so Kim and I had noticed that there's no mosquitoes at all now of course when you start a fire a lot of times mosquitoes disappear but we had this going before we started the fire and there wasn't a single mosquito and what you can do is you can buy this little pack though it's so it's thermocell if you can see that mosquito repellent um, and basically what it does is it has some mats and they last about four hours and you place them up here on the top of this guy and then you start it up and then it's also got these little butane cartridges uh, those last 12 hours so all in all um, I don't recall the price we bought it last year uh, but again I'll link it down below with these kits but if you're gonna go in here with a mosquito this is a pretty cool little guy and the lantern actually will bright up, brighten up quite a bit so at night you can use it as a standard lantern or you can just turn it off and still work um, and so we usually just you have to pop this guy up to get it to work but Anyhow, if you've got uh, any mosquito issues, look at purchasing this thing. Like I said, right now we're out here and you know, there's not a single mosquito bothering us, so. Good morning, day three. We are in beautiful Utah, where it's supposed to be a dry climate. We left Oregon hoping to get away from rain, and then look what we get. I mean, it rained all night last night too. I mean, it poured. Luckily, it's not terrible at the moment, so got to get the truck loaded up, or got to get the trailer loaded up. And uh, that's what they made rain gear for, right? So tip number whatever for this trip, make sure you have some rain gear. We noticed on a lot of YouTube videos, RV travel, they always show you all the good stuff, right? They always show you all the sunny destinations and all the fun that they're having, right? But they never really show you the pains that you have to go through to get there. So we're heading into Salt Lake now and the weather's pretty bad as you can see, a lot of rain. And we are Monday morning at 8.52. So you think by now people would be at work. At least in my life, people are at work by nine o'clock in the morning. But we are in some nasty traffic. 
and the water's so deep in some spots that people are, you know, when they hit them, it's just splashing, hydroplaning, all that stuff. So hopefully where we're heading, just outside of Moab, we got about three hours to go. Uh, it's supposed to be 70. So we're hoping that we can finally get some sunshine because this has been one wet couple days. It's so nasty, you can't even hardly see the mountains yeah. that are like iconic for driving through Salt Lake City. They're out there, I swear. Our stop three on our journey. We are in Green Valley, Utah at Green River. Green River Valley. It's a Green River State Park and we are going to be here for a couple nights and then uh, potentially heading over across the street basically to the KOA. Uh, the state park is actually pretty nice. It's got a uh, fire pit. It's got some benches you can sit on. Everything's concrete uh, whereas the KOA is um, all gravel. And then we noticed as well that there's Shady Acres, I think was the other RV park here that you can stay at. So of all the, if you had to stay in Green River, I would suggest here at the state park, but uh, if you have a chance and can stay in, in Moab, Moab's definitely breathtaking. So um, don't miss that. We couldn't do it unfortunately because the Easter Jeep Safaris this week and every single thing was booked. We actually drove all the way into Moab hoping to be able to find a spot and we couldn't find a single spot. I take that back, the KOA there wanted to charge us $120 for one night. All right, so we made a quick stop on our way to Dead Point, uh, Dead Horse, sorry, Dead Horse State Park. And this is the view you get just from the pull-off. And I bet you've probably seen that if you've ever seen some westerns. So we are at Dead Horse State Park. And they got some mountain biking here. Uh, you can bring your dogs. And they've got, I don't know, miles and miles and miles of trail. And so, looks like it might be a pretty cool spot. Oh man, if you wanted to jump, Yikes. you could end your life quick like. That's pretty cool. This trail's only a quarter mile. Check this out, guys. Check this out, guys. This is awesome. So Daisy is in her element. There's one thing Daisy loves. It's hiking. And nothing better than hikes that have, like, obstacles. She loves obstacles. So we are on our way to an overlook. From the visitor center, you got about a mile walk in and a mile walk out. So this is one beautiful trail I've been on a lot of cool trails in my life I don't know if I've ever seen one like this all right so we're heading back the whole loop to go around it, it's about four miles we got down maybe close to a mile and we don't have any water we didn't know we would do a loop anyway so it's not hot but it is the desert and we're sweating a little bit. And Daisy is uh, so old, she doesn't do well. Once you walk her more than a couple miles, she starts to have a lot of pain. So what we're gonna do is head back and then we're gonna maybe uh, get some water and then do one of the other overlooks. And our pass is good for three days. It's $20 for a vehicle, but you get a pass for three days, so couple days supposed to be a really sunny day so hopefully we might be able to come back for a sunset maybe that'd be pretty cool
my foot and there would be my death. just goes nuts and then it'll die. This will happen. Alright, so we were just driving into Moab and we saw this uh, little walkway that you can take and it crosses a bridge over the Colorado River. So we'll take a quick look and see what we can find here. Kim is so proud of herself this morning. She's cooking us breakfast on the stovetop. Normally I pull out the barbecue and cook the breakfast when we camp, but we've already got it packed away because we have to move this morning, so I didn't want to have to unpack it. So she was able to light the burner on this propane tank all by herself. And even though she was scared that she was gonna <laughs> explode, you know, I was a little scared as well, she made it work. He chose to be in the other room. What other room? The other room's called a shower. <laughs> Much that's really the other room. We don't really have well, another the other room. Side of the door, so it is. It is a room. Yeah, we don't really have rooms here. We've got a door <laughs> to the bathroom. So it's day I can't even remember. What day is this for us? So it's our fifth day. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yep, day five. And we're moving to our fourth spot. Yep. Hey, well, we got to be here for two nights. Fourth spot in five days. Luckily, where we're heading now, the KOA will be there for uh, five nights. Five nights, I think. Four nights. Um, so basically, a little disappointed that we have to leave here. This is actually a really nice park in the place I'd recommend if you're going to come to Green River, uh, this would be the place that I would stay if I were you. Um, the KOA, we'll show you when we get over there. It's fine for what it is, any, just like any standard KOA. The issue is this is $35 a night to stay in this really nice state park, $60 a night to stay at that KOA, so almost double. And I think that has to do with these Jeep Safari being close to town. Um, I think that they're just kind of jacking up their rates, I can imagine. That could be sixty dollars a night yeah. any other time of year if somebody's paying they wouldn't have any occupancy if that was the case so oh. i think they kind of got us with the supply and demand type situation so and we reserved it early that's what we got yeah so this place is state park you can reserve on reserve america and so on. on another note what lesson did we learn oh yeah from this um don't open your door in serious wind don't open your door in serious wind yes. that busted on us so now <laughs> We've uh, got the redneck tie strap. <laughs> We're looking it, really fancy. It bent this whole thing. Yeah. And busted the plastic on that. Luckily, it's an easy replaceable. Yeah, we can part. fix it. Not but. a big deal. But yeah, like she said, definitely uh, pay attention to the wind when you're opening your doors. If you have these um, mechanisms that hold the door open, because it'll bust easy. And that wind wasn't that hard. I mean, it was. Uh, it was 20 mile an hour. Yeah, 20. Dust, okay. So. Okay, we're gonna do the old 
hey, let's try to get in the car trick with Kim. So when she comes, we're going to just pull away and just make her, just make her run after her. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> How you doing? Stop, No, go please. ahead. Come on, get on in. Come on, we're going slow enough. Get in. All right, come on. You're winded. Don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Why are you breathing so hard? Because I ran. Alright, so here we are on the new site at the KOA, which is about a two minute drive from where we were. Got everything unloaded here. In-laws are here. Got their motorhome unpacked last night. Uh, so everybody's ready to go. We're going to uh, load up here quickly and then uh, head over to one of the state parks. Not quite as good as the state park we stayed at for almost half the price but we knew coming here that we aren't going to be at our campsite often we're going to be out and about so here's a quick little 360 view there's kim walking around so it's not terrible just nothing fancy we're going to do a little spy attack There's Patty playing on her phone. Why we camp? Just going for a close up. Oh, oh knock it off. <laughs> Hello. Oh, look at this pretty Jeep. It's so clean. How'd it get so clean? Hey, Dick, what are you doing in there? And the alcohol. Look at all that. What are you Got some tea. Hey, how you doing? Say hi. Hey. I got something for you. Better be good. I don't know. Better be good. Oh, jerky. I yeah. Do you like these? Oh, I Jason? do like those. Yeah, teriyaki. Aren't these fun to yeah. Eat? yeah, they are. Would you like one now? Sure. You? Yeah, go ahead. Hook it up. So here's what we're going to be traveling in for a couple of days yeah, four adults for and a dog in this small little guy. It's going to be a good time, and the funny part is it's supposed to be in the 80s, so we're going to see how that's going to work out. Look at this little guy. This is a the new JL. Oh, it's tiny. Oh, it's going to be interesting. This is oh, yeah. you, my friend. Thanks. 